Hey, thanks for being a part of the conversation. This is Play It Forward. Real people, real stories. The struggle to play it forward. Episode number 610 is with Spencer R. Rackley IV, the astro nerd. Hey, I want to start things off by by pretty much kind of clarifying what's what's going on with, with everything up in space. Because how is it that we're getting two of these lunar eclipses so close together? I, have we ever gone through this before? Um, well, the situation for these eclipses is uh, kind of kind of like uh, the position in the orbit of the Earth around the Moon and the position of the orbit of the uh, I mean uh, the position of the orbit of the Moon uh, of the Earth around the Sun and the position of the orbit of the Moon around the Earth. Um, the Moon is tilted five degrees to the plane of the uh, Earth's orbit so that when it's on one side of the sun, actually a quarter away around, um, the tilt puts the moon above and below the, the uh, uh, sun and the shadow passes over and uh, below the Earth. When, when it's a quarter or away around the orbit, uh, there's a node on each side where the moon will line up with the sun and sh- cast a shadow on the earth. Mm. The eclipses for a particular place on the earth, uh, usually it takes around 400 years for an eclipse to occur in the same place. Now, this these two eclipses that we had this year, the October 14th annular and the um, um, one that's coming up in April, uh, they cross and the, the eclipses are quite uncommon to cross like that, mm. uh, especially in this short period of time. We had one in 2017 that did about the same thing and uh carbondale illinois will get the 20 24 april 8th eclipse as well as it had the 2017 eclipse wow. so you got you know several very rare occurrences happening at the same uh place mm-hmm. When when it when this sort of thing happens, I mean, I can't imagine what the impact is on this planet when it goes dark for what, when maybe thirty seconds or even three minutes. But what is the impact? I remember the last one in two thousand seventeen that we experienced. I mean, it, it became peacefully calm. Everything just went silent in the forest. Um, that that's because the uh, animals think it's becoming nighttime again. Okay, and they'll go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know. The, the eclipse can be anywhere from seconds long to up to seven minutes, a total eclipse. Yeah. yeah, and they've always fascinated me in the way that it really proves how much the planet and the, and you know, is moving around the moon or how the moon is moving around the planet. Because, you know, you always heard about it in science, but until you physically go through an eclipse, you physically see it. You experience it. Is that the reason why you're drawn to it? Once you see one eclipse... You will start trying to find a way to the next one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, People up here in 2017 that saw the 2017 partial eclipse here, um, they say, you know, I saw it. Uh, What? What? What's the big deal? Mm -hmm. If you weren't south of uh, Spartanburg, you did not see a, a total solar eclipse. You saw a partial, and. If you were south of Spartanburg and north of Augusta, you were awed like nothing you've ever experienced. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's kind of like seeing God. <laughs> so now, you know, we've always heard... And that will be in Luxor, Egypt, and it will be almost seven minutes long. Wow. Wow. And then there's one in 2026 that goes through Iceland and Spain. 
So uh, I, I'm planning I'm planning on those right now. Well, how do you plan for it? Because there's one thing that you shared with me many times is that this is a, this is a money making thing for a lot of different businesses because the cost of even camping right now uh, for this next one it's in the thousands. If you want to if you want to see it, it well let, let me give you a little background. In ninety one. 1991 there was a total solar eclipse that was six minutes and 40 some some odd seconds and it went through mazatlan mexico and hawaii so you you had a, a, a an arc that was coming from hawaii down through mazatlan mexico um me and my wife wanted to go to that eclipse and about two years ahead of time i saw that carnival cruise lines was going to put a uh, ship down there so i called them up asked them what they were doing for an eclipse for the upcoming eclipse and they said what's an eclipse oh no that gives you an idea about you know how out of it they were in the 2017 eclipse two years ahead of time i was able to book uh 30 rooms down in irma south carolina uh, for a group that I was taking down there for this eclipse, uh, for that eclipse. And it worked out well. I tried to do the same thing for this one. Nobody wanted to touch it. Mm. Nobody wanted to give me rooms ahead of time. I could not get more than one room for this eclipse. And I had to wait till April the 8th, 23 to book it Mm. and the next day most of the rooms were gone these people have figured out what's going on and how many people are coming and they're boosting their prices left and right Mm. Mm. i was looking at a, a hotel site yesterday and they have four day weekends set up for this thing and some of them are like sixteen hundred dollars Seventeen hundred dollars, and there's not many places left with rooms open. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, in, in the business world, and when when you say four days, I mean that to me, I, if I were a hotel owner, I would make sure that you did stay there three or four days so I can get my money on both sides of it. Uh, yeah, um, that that is a uh, a, a big thing that they're doing. They're they're trying to get you to stay longer than that actually do you like the way that nasa has been really focusing in on uh because the, the nasa channel was was doing basically play-by-play action in fact you even got eric thomas from channel three doing some play-by-play action of of the eclipse that stuff to me fascinates me because a lot of people like you said are so uneducated about uh, you know what what the eclipse is and what the effects are yeah um nasa does a good job eric thomas was down there in irma with with my group and uh he did a great job down there uh play by play doing that eclipse and uh for like months before that particular eclipse he was on his weather station you know his weather channel uh promoting the thing and explaining exactly what would happen and uh what you would see and all of these other things um yeah, they're doing a good job of it. Yeah. When do you start getting ready to take off out of town for something like this? I know it's in April, but you still have to plan ahead. I've been planning for this thing for two years. Jeez. Wow. I've been uh, setting up cameras uh, and, and test running and, and um, you know, doing all the things necessary. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to ship all my equipment to Texas and have it safe and have it arrive on time um you know there's there's lots of things that you have to do to uh get ready for one of these things so you take this really seriously not just somebody who's got a pair of those fancy glasses but you you, i mean you're, you're taking camera work down there with you as well you see this hat yes it says eclipse mega movie (laughs) Uh, I was doing the Eclipse mega movie with a bunch of people at the last Eclipse. It was a scientific experiment where they were going to take uh, 
images that people have shot across the the eclipse path and put them together into a uh, movie so they can see the streamers and how they floated out and um, how how the uh, magnetic fields were interfering and uh, pushing those streamers in certain directions. And for this eclipse, I'm still part of the mega movie uh, eclipse team. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing. Uh, take images all along the eclipse path and put them all together to make a movie uh, for scientific research. Oh, my God. My God. That's, see, that's the kind of stuff that fascinates me. As we continue to grow in space, putting man back on the moon and reaching out to Mars, it's almost like we, we need these eclipses to keep our own interests here on this planet. Yes. And... There's a lot of science that can come out of uh, observing eclipses. Uh, for instance, they don't really know the the size of the sun. And one of the experiments that are, is going to be done for this eclipse is uh, imaging, trying to figure out how big an angular uh, uh you know the, the the angle of the uh view to mm -hmm. see how uh, see how big the sun actually is mm, mm, mm. well man we got to talk even more and more about this the closer we get so we can get some excitement going you know on this side of the planet and and really getting people involved and in, you know looking for new information yes um some of the things that can be done i have a little trick here mm -hmm. it, you can bear with me for a second um something that people at home can actually do it's a small model of the earth and the moon see i got a a, a yardstick yeah i'm putting a, a one inch ball on one end to be the earth on the other end I'm going to put up less than a pea size ball for the moon. Hmm. And you can take this out in your yard on a sunny day and point the moon at the sun and try to find a way to get the shadow to fall <laughs> on the earth and show you exactly how difficult that alignment actually is and it works real well and it can teach a lot of people exactly how eclipses occur wow that's pretty fascinating that's very fascinating another thing that you got to remember is your eclipse glasses yes you have to have those now around here the that eclipse is going to be about 80 percent uh kind of like the uh 2017 it was like 95 percent here um 80 percent is is a fairly decent uh partial eclipse um but you're going to need your solar eclipse glasses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which you can get at amazon very easily yeah you can get them there i have a web uh, a website that people can go to um it's called uh eclipse.aas.org and that's the American Astronomical Society website. I'm a member of that uh, group and they have all the information that you ever wanted to know about total solar eclipses and partial eclipses and lunar eclipses and things like that. Um, that would be a good place for everyone to go to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, where can Oops, how can how can people reach out to you? Um, Astro Nerd at BellSouth.net. Well, promise me we're going to talk before that e eclipse actually happens. Maybe when you get into Texas, we can we can get together and you can tell me what's going on down there. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be way busy. <laughs> I'm going to be way busy because I'm I'm also working with the uh, 
uh, visitors bureau of the, of the little town that I'm going to be in. Yeah. And they're going to be partying in the streets and they're going to be setting up food trucks and they're going to be having speakers and all this kind of stuff. And I'm, I, I'm going to be real busy with them. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. I like to hear that. All right. A week ahead of time, we'll get together and we'll talk about it again. All right. Yeah, we could we could do it anytime you want to, except for that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, thank you so much for talking today and at, at least enlightening us on what this is all about and how we can prepare for it. Well, it's it's a very, very amazing experience. It's kind of like seeing God. Yep. It's it's that bizarre that inspiring and that amazing uh if you've never seen one you have to go and stand in the shadow of the moon and 99.9999999999 percent of totality is not good enough yep yep wow well you be brilliant today okay sir you do the same <laughs>